everyone gets wrong, and you're never going to look at a sewing needle the same again. My name is Winston Mayo. I make the Bible easy and simple to understand. The scripture that I'm coming from today is from Matthew, and it says, It's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So the first thing you probably think of when you think of this scripture is a camel fitting through a sewing needle. But what if I told you that this Bible verse has nothing to do with sewing needles, but it has everything to do with doors? So you'll never look at this Bible scripture the same again. The Bible is written in Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. If you buy a study Bible, like the attached NIV study Bible you can purchase below, you'll see that the eye of a needle is not a sewing needle, but is actually a door. In cities and kingdoms with massive populations, they will have massive walls to protect their citizens, like Jerusalem and Israel. You'll have your main door that was used for transport and exports. That was your main gate. But then you have a smaller door on the side of your main gate that was about 8 to 10 feet tall. There was one problem with this door being called the eye of a needle. Camels are tall. In fact, the average camel, when it's standing straight up with its hump, is probably 6 to 8 feet tall. The problem is that when you have transport goods and other materials on top of it, it stands as tall as the door of the eye of the needle. So you had two options when it comes to getting your camel into the gate, into the eye of the needle. Either you have to take off all the baggage off of your camel, or your camel had to kneel down. Therefore, this Bible verse was never about camels, and it was never about needles. It's actually about how a person gets into heaven, and it's number one, through the gospel. The gospel says, if you repent, turn away from your sins, and believe in Jesus, that is your baggage, just like on the top of the camels. Jesus says, if any man wants to follow me, let him count the cost. You may lose everything. You have to know that God is holy and he takes away your baggage by taking away your sin, your guilt, your shame off of you and putting it onto himself on the cross. Knowing that he took on the sins of the world on the cross and he atoned for us. He did the payment of sins through his body, through his beatings, his whippings on the cross in the world. That's why John chapter 10 says, Jesus says, no man can enter but if by me. Jesus says, he is the gate. He is the eye of the needle in which men must be saved. The Bible says, if there is no bloodshed, there is no remission of sins. So that's number one. Just like the camel had to take off all his baggage, we had to humble ourselves and take off all our baggage when it comes to our sins or any good works, because our good works are filthy rags. They won't get us into heaven, but it's Jesus' finished work on the cross. And then number two, this scripture is actually about humility, kneeling down and worshiping God. It says that when the camel got through the eye of the needle, it had to bend down and worship. In the Hebrew, if you read your study Bible, the word worship means to lay prostrate, to kneel down. And that's us when we know that we are sinners against a holy God. It says that we are no longer slaves of sin, but we're actually sons of God. This is the very first sermon in Matthew 5 in the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes is not a list, but it's actually a stair step on how a person gets to heaven. It says that we progress up, and the first step up to God is actually down through humility. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. If you read in the Hebrew in your study Bible, blessed and the poor in spirit actually means blessed are those who are desolate. So the first thing that the Holy Spirit does is convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. If you know that there's nothing good in you, then you can actually move to the second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. The second beatitude says blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted. That means after you know you are poor, there's nothing good in you. There's no holiness in you. There's nothing that can earn your salvation. You'll begin to mourn and weep of repentance, just like 2 Corinthians chapter 7. That means God, the Holy Spirit, being the comforter, he will comfort you with salvation in the cross. And so that's the good news, that if you repent and believe in Jesus, that the Holy Spirit, being a comforter, will comfort you and cleanse you from all your sins. So you won't have any guilt, any shame, and all that. And then lastly, the reason that the Holy Spirit comforts us is because Jesus, through the gospel, has cleansed us from all sins. 
we no longer have any guilt or shame. And so we can serve a living God by no longer being dead in our sins through dead works and dead efforts. And this comes through humbling ourselves through God's choice of salvation being Jesus Christ. It says that there is no name under heaven and earth in which men must be saved but by Jesus Christ. So next time that you read the passage of an eye of a needle, don't think of a sewing needle or a camel, but think of doors being Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching, and make sure to ask me your hardest Bible question below. And if you want to learn how to make videos like this, contact GloryHouseStudios at gmail.com to receive training.